Hi, welcome to the Casula Powerhouse Digital Program. My name is Lauren and I'm the gardener here at the Bellbird Kitchen Garden. Today's episode of Garden Bites, we'll be talking about maintaining your plants that you've planted and looking at common pests and diseases and how you can treat them in the garden. Now diseases can be caused by several things. They can be caused by fungi and bacteria, uh, viruses, um, and also there are diseases caused by malnutrition. So deficiencies in particular minerals in the soil can cause diseases as well. Um, now all of these things have various symptoms. It might be black spots on the leaves or it might be um, a grey powdery coating on the leaves. Um, but there are treatments that you can do and things that you can to do to help prevent this. Um, diseases can also be spread on your garden tools, uh, particularly on your secateurs because they're cutting through the plant. So make sure that um, at least weekly or after using your tools on a plant that looks diseased that you disinfect your tools. You can do this with just a bit of methylated spirits on a rag and uh, just wipe down the blades of your secateurs. And things like your shovel and your garden fork, just give them a really good hose off with the hose. If you're reusing seedling trays or pots that have previously had plants in them, make sure you give them a good wash in the tub with a bit of soap and water. And this will also prevent diseases and fungal spores and bacteria from transmitting from one plant to the other. When you find a plant that does have a disease on it, make sure you cut away the diseased part of the plant and don't put this in your compost because if it's something like powdery mildew or some other sort of bacterial or fungal infection, you can actually spread it through into your compost. Put these in a garbage bag and put them into your rubbish bin uh, and that way you'll be sure that you don't spread the disease amongst your other healthy plants. Powdery mildew is probably one of the most common fungal diseases that you're likely to see in your garden. Uh, it tends to affect uh, cucumbers and zucchinis and pumpkins and, and plants in that family. At the moment we're uh, growing snow peas and peas and these are also susceptible to powdery mildew. Now there's a couple of things you can do. Don't overcrowd your plants when you're planting them out. Make sure each one has plenty of space and plenty of air around it. Um, powdery mildew is more prevalent in the warmer uh, months of the year. It, it really loves the humidity. Um, so don't water your uh, plants directly onto the leaves. Make sure your watering system is watering the soil, not the leaves. That will help reduce the incidence of um, powdery mildew. You can also use a milk spray, uh, one part full cream milk to nine parts of water. Give it a really good shake in a spray bottle and thoroughly coat all the leaves top and bottom. And what this does is it alters the pH on the surface of the leaf, which then prevents the powdery mildew spores from germinating. Now I have tried this and if you are persistent and do it every few days, it actually works really well. Another method of treating powdery mildew is with a sulphur based spray. Um, if you look at your local hardware or nursery, there are several different brands available. Uh, and these again work quite well. Um, and uh, as long as you treat it regularly and particularly after rain because it will wash off, then um, you should be right. Um, keep an eye out for powdery mildew on your peas and snow peas as we come into winter. Uh, and if you spot it, uh, take those leaves off and dispose of them immediately and treat the plant immediately because it does spread very fast. And not all insects in your garden are a problem. Of course, there are many, many beneficial insects. Here in the garden, I have seen several species of wasps flying around. Uh, now, these uh, wasps actually um, collect the caterpillars, particularly off the broccoli. Uh, and they, um, I think they actually lay their eggs inside the caterpillar, which sounds rather gross, but that's nature for you. Um, and it's a really, really good um, control method. Um, there's a few things you can do to encourage beneficial insects into your garden. Uh, you can build an insect hotel, um, which we have one here, and, um, and you can also plant plants that um, these insects like. Um, bees, of course, are one of the most beneficial insects you can have in your garden because they will pollinate your vegetable flowers. Um, without pollination, you won't get any veggies. Um, and also there are many species of native bees uh, as well, which are highly beneficial for pollination. 
Um, now, talking about pollination could be a whole other episode um, and it is quite an involved um, uh, topic. So um, I suggest you probably have a look on the internet, um, do a bit of research about pollinators and what you can do to attract them into your garden. Um, but certainly building a little bee hotel uh, or an insect hotel is a really great project that you can do with the kids and you'll see the results of it pretty quickly. Now whilst talking about the beneficial insects, we mustn't forget that there are many other beneficial animals um, that should be welcome in your garden. In particular, blue tongue lizards and skinks are fantastic. Now, here in the bellbird garden, um, I actually have quite a lot of um, eastern water skinks, and they're quite a large skink, and they are fantastic because they eat all the slugs and snails, and I don't need to do any um, pest control for slugs or snails here in the garden. The skinks just clean them all up beautifully. For a healthy weed and disease-free garden, here are my main tips. Have naturally resistant healthy plants by feeding and watering your plants correctly. Vigilance is the key. Look at your garden every day for signs of damage. And remember, prevention is better than the cure. If you do find a pest of some kind, identify it immediately and treat it immediately with an appropriate treatment. Follow the directions on the packet carefully and wear the correct PPE. Encourage beneficial insects, birds and lizards and other critters into your garden and enjoy your little slice of paradise. So see you next time. And meanwhile, go out and get your hands dirty.